Okay, hello everyone. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Blender 2.59 just uh, was released, and I wanted to give you some heads up on a couple of the new features. Uh, one thing I wanted to let you know about is uh, we just got uh, a what they call a space navigator. Let's go in. It looks like this. It's a it's a three dimensional mouse. So basically, what you do is you can um, Okay, here's a little animation that's playing. But basically, the three-dimensional mouse will go ahead and um, you can manipulate your uh, models in real time. And they have even a little uh, Blender uh, tutorial here or whatever. And as you can see, there's um, like a kind of a tower at the top of the mouse. And as you move it around the um, three-dimensional, as you move the three-dimensional mouse, your your viewport will move in real time. So, for example, right now I'm not touching the mouse. I'm just uh, manipulating this this 3D mouse and I'm able to kind of cruise through my scene. And what's nice is that you can still use the mouse so for example if you're in edit mode you could select some pieces you could use your 3D mouse to move your viewport and you still have your mouse hand free to do your editing. Okay. It takes a bit of getting used to but um, the thing that I wanted to let you know is if you have 2.59 uh, it's supposed to support this 3D mouse uh, out of the box uh, the thing that you'll need to be aware of is that um, the driver that comes with it was causing Blender to crash on startup. So uh, after doing some research, I found out that you actually need to use this um, this driver, the the 10 beta 4, and uh, because here is the URL for it here, because YouTube won't let me put the URL in in the show notes, I don't think. So uh, or you could just do a search for this and they'll bring you here. You just go ahead and download it. After you've done that, everything should be fine. Uh, if you're if you're on the Windows, I think it'll work okay anyway. Uh, once you've done that, you go um, down into your system preferences on your Mac, and you can set up, you can choose um, any application that you want to use it with, like Photoshop or something, or, or 3D Code or whatever. And uh, then you can choose that and go ahead and set up what each axis does and the sensitivity and everything in that. And so... Oops, as you can see, I, I must have already done something there. But... Okay. Alrighty. So, um, that's one thing to be aware of. Um, if you were using, for example, Lightwave, uh, Lightwave kind of supports this 3D uh, mouse out of the box. And if you uh, want to configure Lightwave, for example, you can just hit uh, O to bring up your options uh, preferences panel and go to the navigation tab and I'll show you the 3D mouse that you have. Uh, you can change the sensitivity, you can change the uh, mode uh, from, for example, right now we're in view mode and you could set it to current item so that you can actually move the current item with the 3D mouse. And once you start using it, it gets to be pretty uh, uh, pretty user friendly or whatever. It's a, it's a bit of a it's a bit strange at first because you have to kind of learn some new muscle memory but um, it it's nice because it frees up your other hand to do you know object manipulation, and uh, you can just I pretty much use it just as a viewport tool. So all right, so that's that. Back to Blender here. Let's take a look at a couple of the new tools here uh, in three uh, two point five nine. The only like really cool ones. Let's let's go ahead and select this guy here, and then put the three D cursor somewhere a bit. Okay, we'll put it, like over his mouth here. Okay, so um, basically select uh, an object. Oops, as you can see here, I'm still having a bit of time getting used to this 3D mouse. Okay, select the object and then um, position the 3D cursor where you want it, uh, it to happen. But um, there's uh, some new tools here. If you hit, hit uh, Shift A and go into Curve, there's two new things. There's Add Ivy to Mesh and Add Tree. Uh, add Tree you can add by itself, but uh, if you want to add Ivy to mes Mesh, basically let's say you're doing like a Roman column or something, you want the I nice ivy that grows over it. Um, what you should do is select the object, position the 3D cursor where you want the ivy to start growing out of, and then just hit Shift A, Curve, Add Ivy to Mesh. Okay. And then you can see here, especially if I hit Z on the keyboard, you can see that the ivy has grown from where we had uh, originally uh, told it, uh, position the 3D cursor. And then once we do that, there's a whole new panel here. 
of Ivy editing options. Now, I, I've so far I've I've found this thing to be extremely touchy. So, but basically, what you're supposed to do is once you've uh, made some edits to these um, options, you're supposed to hit Update Ivy, and then you can see that the Ivy will change. Uh, if you change the length and the size, I've noticed that it, it will tend to kind of freak out on you a bit. But um, anyway, you can go ahead and just start changing these. Update Ivy. So you can see that you can get different types of Ivy. And then later on, uh, you know, you can go ahead and these um, leaves here must be, you know, textured. Uh, I think each one comes with its own UV map or whatever, but uh, that's the basics of it. So you can start growing that onto buildings and, and whatnot. And uh, it's a good starting off point. You can see here that it kind of creates these like tendrils for you. And uh, you can go ahead and start editing those. I guess you could, oops, tab and you can start editing these if you want to manually, I guess. Okay, that's that. Uh, new. Okay, uh, the other one is um, you can just use this tool by itself. Just hit Shift A, Curve, Add Tree. Okay, so now we have a tree in the scene. And what this does is uh, it programmatically creates a tree for you. So um, again, you know, there's a million different options for this tree. But let's go over some of the basics. If you hit bevel under geometry, then you can see the actual tree branches. All right. And then you can go ahead and mess with that until you're uh, fine with it. Uh, of course, the other thing you'll want probably is you'll want to show the leaves. Hit show leaves. The leaves will come up. Uh, the other nice thing I found out is that, and of course, you can just keep messing with these until you get it the way you want. Uh, the final thing that I found out is nice is um, you can use, uh, if you use armature, you'll see an armature has been created. And then if we go into our armature tab and hit x-ray, you'll be able to see it easier. Okay. So now I select this armature, and now it's just like a regular armature. You can go into pose mode, and you start posing this armature. And you can see you can actually use it also as kind of like a tree modeling tool. You can go ahead and, and position these branches any way you want. Or you could animate them. And as you saw before, I kind of clicked out of it. It said there was a thing for um, armature animation. So uh, you could go ahead and, and set that up and, and have it uh, you know, do some wind gusting animation for you or whatever. Um, or you can just, you know, if you wanted to do the Whomping Willow from Harry Potter, for example, you could just manually animate it with this, this tool. Uh, saves you a lot of time. Uh, there's some other enhancements, but uh, I'll let you, you know, get to those on your own. That's kind of the basics of it. So uh, in in um, recap here, uh, we got the, the uh, 3D mouse, we've got the Ivy tool and the tree tool, and there's a host of other kind of smaller improvements, and I uh, hope you enjoy those.